Well, good Monday morning to you. It's still dark. <laughs> and the time is still messing with me. But, hey, we had a good weekend, good sunshine, nice kind of springy weather, and lots of basketball. So, uh, I'm assuming everybody, if you picked your brackets, they're all pretty much destroyed. Unless you just went through and picked all the lower seeds, then you're doing all right. A lot of upsets. It was kind of fun to watch. But we're going to start off the week in Psalm 106, and it's a long one. So uh, basically, um, as I was reading through it last night and kind of looking at some other different insights, um, one of the commentaries that we use um, kind of just broke the sections into, uh, well, we kind of broke it up into sections and gave it a title. And so I'll give you the title of the section, and then you'll kind of see how the verses fit with that. Um, again, it's kind of a, a history lesson of, of Israel and their interaction with God. And, um, and verse 6 is going to kind of set the thing up for us. So uh, the first six verses of Psalms 106 are called Joyful a joyful faith. So it's give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Who can list the gracious miracles of the Lord? Who can ever praise him enough? There is joy for those who deal justly with others and always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show your favor to your people. Come near and rescue me. Let me share in the prosperity of your chosen ones. Let me rejoice in the joy of your people. Let me praise you with those who are your heritage. And then verse 6. Like our ancestors, we have sinned. We have done wrong. We have acted wickedly. <clears throat> so this kind of, the first, again, praising God to begin with, but then he's also acknowledging that um, he's not saying they, they sinned. Um, he is saying our ancestors sinned, but he said it's, we're like our ancestors. Um, we've sinned against you too. And because of that, that's why we find ourselves in this condition. Not exactly sure, um, when this was written and after which one of the captivities, it could have been after they were taken captive by the Babylonians, um, not exactly sure the author is anonymous but it just details how the people um how they just interacted with god and so it starts out joyful but then they acknowledge he acknowledges that just like the ancestors before these we have also sinned and so now they find themselves in our next section uh he's describing triumphant beginnings of of the people of Israel and the nation. So he starts in verse 7. Our ancestors in Egypt were not, were not impressed by the Lord's miraculous deeds. They soon forgot his many acts of kindness to them. Instead, they rebelled against him at the Red Sea. Even so, he saved them. To defend his honor, to defend the honor of his name and to demonstrate his mighty power, he commanded the Red Sea to dry up. He led Israel across the sea as if it were a desert. So he rescued them from their enemies and redeemed them from their foes. Then the water returned and covered their enemies. Not one of them survived. Then his people believed his promises. Then they sang his praises. So things started out good. Even though the people were complaining and whining, God still rescued them and things have started out good. But the next section... Uh, we get to is uh, a dangerous decline in the people's relationship with God. So he goes on in verse 13. Yet how quickly they forgot what he had done. They wouldn't wait for his counsel. <clears throat> in the wilderness, their desires ran wild, testing God's patience in that dry wasteland. So he gave them what they asked for, but he sent a plague along with it. The people in the camp were jealous of Moses and envious of Aaron, the Lord's holy priest. Because of this, the earth opened up. It swallowed Dothan and buried Abiram and the other rebels. 
fire fell upon their followers, a flame consumed the wicked. The people made a calf at Mount Sinai. They bowed before an image made of gold. They traded their glorious God for a statue of grass-eating bull. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done such great things in Egypt, such wonderful things in the land of Ham, such awesome deeds at the Red Sea. So he declared he would destroy them. But Moses, his chosen one, stepped between the Lord and the people. He begged him to return from his anger. He begged him to turn from his anger and not to destroy them. So again, there's some history there of the rebellion of the people and how quickly they forgot, he says. And, um, <clears throat> and I think, again, we need to try to find ourselves in this psalm and what's going on here. And uh, I think uh, we too could say that we have quickly forgotten our God here, even in our own country. And we're looking for other, other places and other people to help, to help us rather than turning to God. So now we have a short, um, we get into a tragic failure. In these next three verses, verse 24, uh, the people refused to enter the uh, pleasant land, for they wouldn't believe his promise to care for them. Instead, they grumbled in their tents and refused to obey the Lord. Therefore, he solemnly swore that he would kill them in the wilderness. They would not, they would, yeah, that he would scatter their descendants among the nations, exiling them to distant lands. Um, it'd be 20 years and old, anybody 20 years and older would not get into the promised land. Um, the rebellion had been enough and those people, that was their punishment. They, uh, they failed to make the, uh, the goal of reaching the promised land because of their constant rebellion. So it's a tragic failure, um, when they turn their back on God so often. Uh, now, We'll move on in verse 28 to costly disobedience. Then our ancestors joined in the worship of Baal at Peor. They even, sacri even ate sacrifices offered to the dead. They angered the Lord with all these things. So a plague broke out among them. But Phineas had the courage to intervene and the plague was stopped. <clears throat> So he has been regarded as a righteous man ever since that time. At Meribah too, they angered the Lord, causing Moses serious trouble. They made Moses angry, and he spoke foolishly. Uh, the first part of this, there was a, uh, the people joined with the other nations and began to worship their gods. Uh, there was, in fact, there was a plague sent to God, to God's people, and twenty-four thousand of them were were killed in this plague, but Phineas intervened, um, and that stopped the plague. He gave the people a little bit of, of reprieve from God. And at Meribah, they angered God, or they angered Moses so much that he spoke rashly and claimed some glory that wasn't him. And now even he himself, in his anger and his response to the people, lost his chance to get into the promised land. So disobedience is costly. It, um, it doesn't separate us from our God, but it can be costly as we suffer the consequences of our disobedience. So now uh, we go into a section of repeated rebellion, beginning in verse 34. Israel failed to destroy the nations in the land as the Lord had commanded them. Instead, they mingled among the pagans and adopted their evil customs. They worshiped their idols, which led to their downfalls. They even sacrificed their sons and their daughters to the demons. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, by sacrificing them to the idols of Canaan. They polluted the land with murder. They defiled themselves by their evil deeds, and their love of idols was adultery in the Lord's sight. That is why the Lord's anger burned against his people, and he abhorred his own special possession he handed them over to pagan nations, and they were ruled by those who hated them. Their enemies crushed them and brought them under their cruel power. Again and again he rescued them, but they chose to rebel against him. 
and they were finally destroyed by their sin. Even so, he pitied them in their distress and listened to their cries. He remembered his covenant with them, and he relented because of his unfailing love. He even caused their captors to treat them with kindness. Um, just a, again, a constant rebellion of the people aligning themselves uh, with other nations, which caused them to pollute their worship, caused them to do things that were in rebellious to the ways of God, even sacrificing their own children. Um, it's a, uh, in verse 41, it says he handed them over to pagan nations throughout their history. Uh, Israel was taken captive by six different nations over a hundred year period. And, um, and each time they would cry out to God and he would rescue them, but it took them a very short time to rebel again and turn away from God. Um, and I think we, we just need to ask ourselves today, um, who are we aligning ourselves with? And it's not so much the other nations. I mean, we are just the United States, we're here, but maybe not so much who, what nations we're aligning, but whose teachings, um, who are we following? Who are we listening to? Who are we putting our hope and our trust in? Um, so much today, even within the church, uh, we struggle to trust the teachings and obey the teachings of God and follow the ways of Jesus uh, instead of investing so much time and energy and hope in the power of our politicians and our government officials. And it is, um, it's not boding well for us right now as we, uh, not blaming one party, both parties have created a mess uh, because it's all about power, not about what's right. And uh, we keep turning to the government for power. Even the church has been turning to the government for, for protection with laws uh, rather than serving the God who parts the Red Sea. Um, the power of, of our God to take care of us and protect us, um, why we are turning to others is uh, confusing to me. Um, but I, I, I'm not denying I haven't done it myself. And, and it's just a call back to us. We're, we, uh, we can go back and say, uh, like our ancestors, we have sinned. We have done wrong. We have acted wickedly. We, we don't always keep our eyes focused on the ways of God. And we're trusting in far too many different people and far too many different ways um, than our God. Uh, he goes on now. Uh, in verse uh, 47, the final, uh, final disciplining. So it says, Save us, O Lord our God, gather us back from among the nations so we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Um, this short little verse encompasses uh, the, div the division of the nation, uh, 10 tribes, uh, broke away from the two tribes of, uh, I can't remember, Judah and Benjamin, I think. Um, anyway, there was a northern and a southern uh, uh, group of people, uh, of God's people. They, they even divided. Uh, the ten tribes ended up getting taken over by the Assyrians in 722 B.C. The two tribes got taken over by the Babylonians uh, between... 606 and 586 um, BC. Then the Medes and the Persians conquered the Babylonians in 539 BC. And it was a year later than that Cyprus allowed uh, Nehemiah uh, to go back and begin to build up the temple and the, and the wall um, of Jerusalem. Uh, so you go from 722 to 538, you've got almost 200 years there. But the people, again, were just in captivity. They were slaves. They were oppressed. Um, God had disciplined them for their constant um, disobedience. If they wanted to live life without God, uh, he would allow it. And that's what it looked like for the people of Israel. 
And again, uh, we need to look at ourselves, uh, at our own nation. If we want to live without God, uh, this is what we get. This chaos and this constant back and forth of power, um, this is what we get. And until we turn our hearts back to God, uh, we are going to be uh, like the people here in the scriptures, going to and fro, back and forth between power struggles and left basically uh, oftentimes feeling like we don't have a voice and we don't have any power uh, because we've chosen to give it away. Uh, we need to humbly uh, submit ourselves to bow down uh, to God and not just cry out to him in words, but, but in actions and the way we live our lives. It needs to start with us and um, in, a, in, a, in a repentant heart uh, as a people. And then God may hear our cries and, and restore our nation. But uh, at, the way, at the rate we're going now, um, we are going to be left in a mess for a long time. Uh, the psalmist finishes out the psalm as uh, most of these psalms of these last four or five have been. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, he acknowledges it's the praise goes to God. And that's where our hearts and our focus should be. Uh, amen means so be it. Um, would we recognize our rebellion? And would we recognize our need to turn back to God, not to a political party, and put our hope and faith in him? And uh, that's what the nations of Israel needed to do, and that's what we need to do today. So let's pray uh, for that to be a reality among us. Father, we ask that we would acknowledge our, our rebellion, our desire, our desires to be comfortable and secure and um, yeah just trusting other other teachings other ways other leaders rather than trusting in you um, we have pushed you out of our culture we've pushed you out of our our society um, and this is what we get a constant state of chaos and so, God, would you humble your people? Would you humble your church? Uh, would your church bow down and worship you? Uh, would your church bow down and trust you that your ways are right and your ways are true, that you are still the God of power, the same God that parted the Red Sea uh, can heal our land today? But would we trust in you? Would we come back to you? And as we cry out for the church, would we help to recognize that that's not some abstract concept, but that's each one of us who call ourselves believers. We individually make up the corporate church. We individually need to submit ourselves to your teachings so that corporately your church will be in obedience to you. And you can humble, you can hum, and hum in our humbleness, you can heal our land. Uh, would it be so? In Jesus' name, Amen. So, long psalm, but uh, again, uh, one that I think we can find ourselves in if we if we truly want to be honest. So, make a difference today. It's it's every it's one act at a time. It's one. It's one word at a time. It's one greeting at a time. Uh, just acknowledging the ways of God in, in our daily lives, one act at a time. So live in that, live in the power of God today and trust him in, with all your circumstances. Have a great day and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.